Sensors provide feedback on the system operation. And you can use that feedback signal to control the output. So in a normal feedback control system, you have the input, which let's say, if this is for a motor, then you have desired motor speed. So that would be the input. And then the error signal, which is a desired speed minus the actual speed. So errors desired minus actual. So you subtract the input from the output, that's the error and the controller can work on the error. So this is a closed loop feedback system. If you did not have sensor feedback, then you would only be going based off of the input position, whatever you desired. You wouldn't actually know where the system was. So the sensors close the loop with feedback so you can control the system based on actually what, how far away it is from where it should be based on just what you want it to do. And there's actually, if you're interested in learning more about feedback control, then on the ET4860 YouTube channel, there are actually um, a whole series of videos about the, this type of control. But there, anyway, there are two main types of feedback control, um, bang bang control and PID. So bang bang control is super easy to implement. It's simple, rough, nonlinear, and discrete. We'll talk about each one of these subsequently. Um, PID control is a little more complicated, but it's a lot more precise. And it, is, it acts continuously. So bang bang control is like a thermostat. There is an upper limit and a lower limit. And the, the, there's no control signal going to the system while the measured variable is in between the limits. So you can see here like temperature of the room is rising, it starts cold, the room starts to heat up. Then once it passes maximum temperature, the AC kicks on until it drives the temperature back down to the allowed minimum. Then it shuts off. Slowly the temperature comes back up again, AC kicks on, drives it back down. So you can see it's off, on, off, on. So this is why it's called bang, bang control because when it hits the top limit, it bangs it down. When it hits the bottom limit, then it's, it's also a limit. So, and this is super easy to implement, um, but also it's not very precise because you just know that you're not keeping temperature at a certain value, you're keeping it within a range. So that would be like here 75 to 78. PID control is proportional integral derivative. The proportional constant, KP, that acts on the error and it decreases the rise time. So Say this is a step response. We're a second order system. Um, the blue is the input. So this is where you want your system to be. And then the second order, the red curve, is where the system actually is. So the goal would be, in this case, it's positional on this axis, but you can use it to illustrate whatever. So say this is desired temperature, and the goal would be to drive the temperature to this certain value. So since the proportional term acts on the error, decreasing the rise time, then the farther away the actual system is from the desired, the harder it will try to pull the system. So this part right here is rise time. So with a high KP, there is less difference between start of signal and time that the system reaches it. With a low KP, this would be a little bit stretched out. And PID control can use any combination of these. So you can use P, I, and D, or a lot of times it'll just be P and D. Um, if you have the integral control in there, it is helpful for acting on integral of the error. So it will reduce steady state error. It remembers the whole history of the system. Now, because it remembers the whole history, it kind of slows the response down. So even though it eliminates the steady state error, 
meaning that you will even out to the right value, then it's, it gives you a slower response and it also makes the math more complicated. So a lot of times people just leave out the integral control. Then derivative control acts on derivative of the error. This decreases the overshoot and the settling time. So the overshoot is how far past the desired the system goes. As the proportional control is trying to bring it back up to here, but then it's going so fast that it goes too far in the other direction. And then the derivative control helps to slow that down. So generally you want the derivative constant to be about 10% of the proportional constant. That tends to keep your system stable. You can implement this digitally in code using sort of this way for your controller or analog in your circuit by actually putting in values for resistor, inductor, capacitor. Probably most of y'all will be using digital because it's a lot easier and you can tweak these constants so that you can see how your system behaves so you get to the right value. 